lucky enough? Well, were you lucky enough to already just live right in the middle of the goddamn eclipse? Or second to that, did you make a little trip to go see it? Oh my goodness. That was fucking cool. That was pretty much the coolest shit you can see. Just, you know, walking around. They, uh, there was another one a few years ago when I was in high school. And it was, uh, it was close. Like, we were close to being right in the middle. But we didn't actually get to see it. Like, really fucking, you know, happen. Like, when the, uh, when the moon was actually right in the middle. So if you weren't right there in like the uh, the path of totality, I'm sure you're like, oh, I mean that's kind of cool, but it's not that cool. Not good. But there will be another one, you know. Just wait until um. Just wait until 2044, and you also happen to live in the uh, the southwest of the states. Not too long, but yeah, that was uh. That was pretty cool yesterday. And you know what else happened yesterday? Was not a lift. Not a lift, because I had legs scheduled for yesterday. And I could tell my quads were still kind of wrecked from um, from the squats, primarily, on the last leg day. So, executive decision. It would be better to save legs for today. And don't worry, you know, it's not like I'm, uh, I don't know, what am I saying, don't worry. But that's not so much that I'm saying, oh, I've changed my ways, now rest days are cool. You know, if you need a rest day, take one. That's always been my stance. But I do think a lot of people take rest days unnecessarily. To the point which, I mean, you really just kind of... I don't want to say nerfing yourself, but in a way I kind of do. Oh, I, uh, I forgot to turn, like, stabilization on, so if the car is shaky, don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, if you take a rest day at any hint of fucking, you know, tiredness, I just don't think it's always necessary, man. You know, just because you're a little tired, just because you're a little, maybe a little sleepy, it doesn't mean that you should just fucking skip out. Because 90, well, maybe not 99, but I'd say the majority of rest days that get taken, unless they're like premeditated and scheduled into your routine, which, you know, if you got one a week or something, that's fine. But when people take rest days spontaneously, I think the majority of those are taken purely just because eh, I'm not really feeling like it. I don't really feel like going to the gym now. Whereas I think the minority say, okay, it would be more beneficial for me to save the lift for tomorrow and have an extra day of rest. You know, that is kind of rarely the case. You know, it's like, uh, how many sick days get used because people are actually sick rather than people who just, you know, had some other shit that they wanted to do that day. So, not like rest days are going to kill you. But I think the lifter who is a little bit more steadfast in going to the gym on his consistent schedule regardless of if he feels maybe just a little bit more lethargic that day that guy is probably gonna get better long-term progress you know because I wanna make every lift crazy you know I do wanna push it every lift and make every lift fucking sick that's kinda my short-term goal but long-term you know consistently having good lifts is much more important than in the short term, having a really insane lift. Like, uh, what's another example I'm trying to say here? I mean, it's simple enough. We all kind of understand the fact that one lift, really, in terms of its actual physical effect on your body, in the long term, it's kind of marginal. Marginal to unnoticeable, you know? But when you add them up in the hundreds, or you know, you get to the point where you're in the thousands, then you're gonna start to see it pay fucking dividends, you know? I mean, one guy can shovel a, you know, maybe 50 pounds of dirt a day, 
And then over the course of years, dude fucking dug a little path through a goddamn mountain. That's, uh, I don't know the name of the guy, but that was kind of an old, old story I always see in posts talking about, like, the benefit of consistent action, you know. So if you know somebody who more often than not is telling you, oh, I had, a, I wanted to, I needed a rest week, I wanted to, I needed a little reset this week, or, ah, well, you know, I can, my, my central nervous system, it's pretty fatigued, I need, I'm going to do a little rest month, I mean, probably kind of rare, but I hear it, you know, I hear it said, oh, I just gotta, I just need a break. You need a break from the thing which is going to give you progress? Well, in a short term, sure. You know, rest day. Nobody says rest week. And nobody should ever say rest month. You know, unless you're going to have like a... Unless you had like heart surgery or something. You know, that's uh, where you get a pass. But I feel kind of silly even saying this, you know. Because the people who want to get jacked... They're already doing it. You know, they don't they don't need they probably don't even want to hear me tell them that. Because they're like, Sam, what are you talking about? Obviously I'm gonna fucking go lift. It's not a question. You know? So maybe that's all I'm trying to say. You know, do a little bit of a deep dive into your own uh your own sort of motivators and whatnot. Do you really want it? And if you do, fuck man. You gotta do what it takes to get there. Which, you know, if that means going to the gym when you're a little sleepy or maybe a little bit extra tired, in the long run, it's going to do you good. But this is, uh, I mean, this is just fucking basic motivational shit, you know, whatever. So plan now is 30 minutes of cardio, and then we can do a little bit of an unpumped check-in. <laughs> This is not fasted cardio, because I, I did have breakfast, I had a half pound, or no, yeah, half pound top round steak, salt, pepper, avocado oil, high heat, a few minutes on each side, you know, flip it probably, uh, I can't remember how many times, maybe six or something, very perfectly well done, no, 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 not well done. You know what I'm trying to say. Perfectly pink. As, uh, like we all love. But that with, uh, two slices. I don't know. One and a half pieces of, uh, like Italian loaf bread. So breakfast's macros were 60 grams of carbs. About 50 grams of protein and 20 grams of fat. Which sounds about right by my calculations. Jesus, that gets fucking... Right my ass. But 30 minutes of cardio will be over like that in a fucking blink of an eye. I really don't understand why you guys have, have so much trouble doing this. Uh, but if you started doing it, hypothetically, you know, and apparently this is like a fucking alternate reality where dreams come true, you know, if you did start doing cardio, you would notice some benefits over a period of time, of course. That's up to you. So let's uh, let's finish that up. I would call that more than a decent sweat. Perfect. I actually went a little bit extra today. Usually I just do 300 calories, 30 minutes. But for whatever reason, the TikTok edits I was watching were really getting me going. So instead I did 33 minutes, but a little higher intensity and about, um, well, 400 calories, I almost forgot. But usually, 300 will do the trick, and it'll give me a good sweat. Well, let's see how we're looking. This is pretty much unpumped. I mean, one could maybe argue I've got some extra blood flowing from having done the cardio itself. I, I would probably tend to disagree. You know, this is nothing compared to after a real workout of any variety, chest, arms, shoulders, anything. But let's run through a couple here.
Oh yeah, just a straight up vacuum. I nearly forgot. <coughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I'm doing a big ass vacuum run after cardio. That'll take your breath away. Just a touch. But yeah, this is pretty much striations. Ooh, there's a little bit of something going on up here anyway. But what I was about to say was pretty much everything should just get freakier from here. Ooh, I mean, that's uh, just a hint, just the slightest hint of a tricep striation. And as you get leaner, those small little, you know, tidbits of extra freaky muscle definition will just continue to get more and more pronounced because underneath my skin and in between my pec is, you know, a pinchable amount of fucking fat tissue. And if you want to see all your fancy pants striations and the muscles that you've been spending fucking, I mean, depending on how you've been lifting or how long you've been lifting, you know, years working towards, you do have to get to a point of leanness where there isn't much in between so that you can actually really see what's going on as if you've got fucking x-ray vision. But let's go home, get in the car and eat something. Hardest workout known to man. The rarest, leak, the rarest completed workout known to man. Rarer than the Tom Platt's 10 by 10 leg day, the cardio session. Come on, guys. I mean, are you? I've said this, you, you understand. I just don't like that you don't do it. But am I starving? Am I absolutely famished to the point where I just want to destroy any food that gets put in front of me, regardless of you know whether or not it's going to align with my diet? Not exactly. Not yet, at least. You know, if you go back and forth between bulking and cutting, and you did actually bulk pretty hard, usually what's going to happen is that first week or even two weeks of starting to die down, you're not going to have too much trouble staying in your deficit just because, I mean, this is my experience at least, but you're just not really fucking hungry for it, you know? Like, if I went from just walking around like normal to dropping my calories to a deficit, yeah, I'd probably be fucking hungry. But by eating in a surplus for that long, I kind of reach a point of, you know, plateaueness where I'm just trying to max out my appetite or max out the amount of food I'm eating, even though my appetite is kind of crashing. And then I'm like, fuck, dude, I'm not, I can't keep this bulk up anymore. We got to cut down and reset, you know, because the beginning of the bulk, I've got no problem chowing down. Zero problem whatsoever. Plus, I've also just finished a, you know, a diet, so I'm actually hungry for extra fucking food, you know? So, this first week, this first two weeks, not really a problem. So, I'm not even really eating any specifically diet-friendly foods, you know? Like, in terms of how full it would make me feel, if I were to eat a, uh, you know, 50 grams of protein worth of turkey breast, spread across a few, like, you know, lettuce wraps with mustard, low-fat mayonnaise, and some, uh, some keto tortillas... So instead of like 20 grams of carbs per tortilla, it's got like, you know, only two or so. Yeah, that would probably fill me up a bit more. But I'm okay having a steak and some actual bread for now. And then as time progresses, I'll need to be a bit smarter with the foods that I eat. Because I want to feel full for the majority of the day. But not eat a ton of food, right? So those two things are kind of contradictory. So it does take a little bit of thought and specific action when you go to the grocery store to get foods that are going to fit that criteria. So no more 
family-sized packs of gummy bears or treats or uh, you know, just calorie-dense foods. It's going to be way easier for me to diet down and get lean by eating stuff that's you know, conventionally fucking healthier. I'm talking egg white omelets, talking lean cuts of steak. I guess that's kind of the same in either case, uh, apart from whenever I make like a fancy pants ribeye or whatever. You know, ground beef. I've got, I kind of have a menu of diet friendly foods. I need to, um, as the cut progresses, don't worry, there will be a full day of eating. I've really kind of deprived you guys of that. How long has it been since the last one? You know, like three months. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah that'll uh yeah I better do another one of those quick plus a little a little grocery trip maybe I'll uh I'll try to get I'll try to get that done within the week but other than that everything's on track I foresee I mean I don't have like a specific end weight goal you know I really just want to get it substantially leaner Oh, goodness. <clears throat> Before the bulk starts up again. But that might be 240. That might be 235. You know, I'll really just have to see where I end up at. Though, you know, I'm not super concerned. You know, It's not like this is a diet for a bodybuilding show where I need to be a specific weight or a specific, uh, well, you know, a specific body fat. For those unaware, I feel like I'll say this all the time, but I get enough comments about it that I do feel like I have to, you know, reinforce it. The point of me dining down right now is not just because I want to get lean for no reason. Like I was saying a second ago, it's so that I can kind of reset my whole system food-wise, get back to a pretty low body fat, so that when I start a bulk, I've got, you know, a little bit of room to play with in terms of the amount of body fat I put on my frame. So if it comes when it comes to your situation, if you're kind of on the on the fritz of uh, whether you want to bulk up or cut down, you know, how much body fat do you have on your frame? Do you have you know an amount that you would probably like to be a bit lower? Then fucking cut down. You know, it's not going to do you much good to start bulking up if your beginning state of the bulk is already. 20% body fat plus because then for you to try to diet down from wherever your end body fat percentage is at the end of a proper bulk which I mean depending on how hard you do it could be like 30% you know it's I'm not you but you know, you know what I'm saying if you start eating in surplus and you're already on the softer side of things you're gonna give yourself a bit of a chore when you try to diet down later the reason that I don't really mind jumping down to a you know substantial deficit right away is because I'm only going to be able or I'm only going to need to die down for like 2 months max because I'm already on the leaner side of things it doesn't take that long to lose you know 10 pounds of body fat so let's there's some uh, some police activity going on over here but 10 pounds of body fat i think the the basic number is that a pound of body fat is 3,000 calories. So for you to burn one pound of body fat, or to lose one pound of body fat, you have to be in a 3,000 calorie deficit. You know? So I think I'm around a 500 calorie deficit-ish. Uh, I mean, about 3,000 calories now. I may drop it even a little bit lower as time progresses. But about 3,000, I'm definitely losing weight. So... My maintenance, I'm not sure exactly, but probably around 3,500, maybe high, high 3,000s. Let's just say 3,500 for argument's sake. So that means every day, I'm in a 500 calorie deficit ish, you know, around there. I don't know my exact maintenance, but I know 3,000 is putting me in a deficit. So 500 calories per day has to come internally. That much energy has to be sort of you know, burned up from fuel that's already you know, stored in my frame, which is going to be 
from fat, you know, from adipose tissue. So 500 calorie deficit a day, that's about 3,500 a week, you know, seven times 500. So that's about a pound-ish of body fat per week. And I think I may actually be in a little bit steeper body fat, or being a little bit steeper deficit than that. So it may be a little closer to pounds and a half, two pounds a week. No, probably a pound. Well, let's just say a pound for argument's sake. You know, so over this course of fucking probably eight weeks or so, maybe a little longer, maybe ten. You know, I'm, I'll have to see when I really get pretty fucking lean. But over that course of time, each week, probably a fucking pound of body fat lost. Ish. I'll really be able to tell when I look at my, uh, my weight on the scale over time. Another benefit to tracking your weight, you know, you get up in the, in the morning, you know, go to the bathroom so your, your system's kind of cleared out, hop on the scale. You know, before you drink anything, before you shower, that's your morning weight. And that's a very consistent readout of how much you weigh. So if every morning I hop on the scale, oh, 250 today. Plot it on uh, Google Google Sheets. The next day, oh, 251. Oh, I gained a pound. Whoa. Okay, whatever. You know, that could just be a water fluctuation. Hop on the scale the next day. Oh, 249. All right. Keep doing that. And over the course of time, if you really are in a deficit, even though day by day is kind of you know up and down, there will be a steady trend line downward. And if there's no trend line. If your weight is not changing, then that means something in your equation is off. Because if you were really in a calorie deficit every day, you would lose body fat. It's not a question of your metabolism or your appetite or you know any pre-existing thyroid condition. Fuck, man. You're just eating too many calories. Or you're not burning enough calories in the day. That's sort of the logic of adding cardio when you're trying to diet down. Now cardio is good for you anyway. It's going to improve your training. It's going to improve your endurance when you're lifting. It will just make your baseline level of body fat lower in a bulk or a cut. I can't speak highly enough of your daily cardio. But in a dieting phase, people understand. You know, people don't necessarily correlate cardio to improving their training, but Everybody gets that if they want to lose body fat, they should probably throw on a sweatsuit and start jogging. You know? Because when you combine increased energy expenditure, aka you know, going on a run every fucking day, with watching your diet, you know, eating in a real deficit, then guess what's going to happen? Over time, body fat is just going to fucking you know, literally burn off you. Now, it takes a while. Anybody who's really gone through like a serious body fat transformation, they know that it fucking takes a while. You know, because I'm talking about dieting down, and for me, I mean, it's just, it's like two months. You know, in the grand scheme of, like, time, that's like nothing. But, you know, if you're a dude, and fuck, man, let's say you're at the 300 mark, and that's, you know, where your starting point is, you got a difficult journey ahead of you. At least in terms of the fact that it is going to take a while. But... If that's you and you do get into tracking your macros and you know doing your daily cardio, lifting is going to help as well. You're going to see some pretty quick fucking results, man. You know, I'm talking pounds a month. Probably, if you're a heavier dude, I mean, I'm not so experienced with that because I've always kind of been on the leaner side of things. But I'll see, you know, videos of dudes upwards of fucking 10 pounds down a month. Because they really get on their shit when it comes to diet. They start training. They do their daily cardio. You know, no cheating. It works. The details have all been laid out for you. The information is there. Same thing goes with you know, fucking anything. You can YouTube how to do XYZ and probably find like an hour long video. Which is totally fucking comprehensive. It's not a lack of information. How to diet down, how to get lean, it's all there. Everybody can do it. Now, when it comes to getting someone actually hyped up to really fucking lock in, get into a routine which is going to 
potentially totally change the trajectory of their life. That's that's a little rarer, you know, that's a little bit trickier. And it's not so often that you can just watch a video and you know, one twenty minute video is gonna make you say, Okay, I need to start doing pretty much two hours of active shit every day to progress towards this end goal that I have now, as well as monitor everything that I eat every day and really kind of fucking put a lot of work into this thing. That's trickier. You know, that's not something you can really... I mean, we don't live in the fucking inception world. You know, you can't just plop that motivation into somebody's mind and have them, you know, turn into a David Goggins. But, you know, it's not that hard. Actually, that's not true. That's not necessarily true. It is kind of a lot of work. But if you want the end result, then good, man. You know? Nothing worthwhile, worthwhile, nothing worthwhile is just going to come to you at the snap of your fingers. And if everything did, then you know, it wouldn't have any fucking value. You know? I, was, uh, I was saying this a few videos ago, but pretty much anything cool that you can do, at least anything pretty cool that isn't pure luck, more likely than not, is going to take years of work. Now, if you enjoy doing that work, then you're probably going to have a good fucking time. You know? If you enjoy going to the gym, getting a pump, watching TikTok edits, and fucking getting hyped up to do your cardio and burning a sweat, then the work part won't feel like work. And then you just kind of get to enjoy the process as well as, you know, progressing over time. Like nothing, you know? You wouldn't, uh... <laughs> if you're a fucking NBA player, you probably don't really consider practice as work because you enjoy it, you know? So, that's, uh... Not necessarily sure exactly what I'm trying to say there. Because, you know, like I said a second ago, you can't just implant workout enjoyment into somebody's mind out of nowhere. But... I can't really name a ton of characters, really nobody comes to mind, who once they get into working out, and once they actually get into fitness for real, they don't really stop. You know, it has a very high, I would say after a period of time, working out, you know, getting in shape and dieting and everything else, it has a very high retention rate after a period of time. And that period of time is however long, or however, however long it takes for someone to make noticeable progress that they themselves can see, or that other people can see. You know, if one summer you start working out in high school, you come back the next, uh, you know, the beginning of the next year, and people say to you, "Hey, do you start working out? Hey, you're a little bigger, man. <laughs> That's fucking cool. You know, that's fun." Or uh, like, you know, anything like that. You know, that's kind of going to hype you up. So, you know, some people, they may start working out for a month or a week. And they say, yeah, this is stupid. This is hard. I'm sweating. I feel gross. I'm done with this. But they didn't really get the full picture. You know, they didn't really get it. They saw a picture of the Sistine Chapel. They saw it and they said, eh, it's just a painting. You know, but once you really get into it, and you see you know, everything that comes along with working out, plus you know the diet phase, the or the dieting side, the you know, cutting down side, the working out side. That's when you fucking really get to visit it and see it in person, and you say, "Holy shit, this thing is sick! Love it." If you uh, if you get what I'm saying there, you know. So that is all I got. Do your cardio, don't do your cardio. I may as well say, do you want better gains or do you want worse gains? Like, I mean, honestly, do you want better gains or do you want worse gains? I think you know the answer. You know, and I know you know that you know the answer. So, act accordingly. But, plan now is eat 
I kind of took a little bit of a nap after I woke up, slept in a touch. So, legs later. I'll probably... Yeah, I know what gym I'm going to. Yeah, so I will see you there for legs tomorrow. So, catch you then.